My name is Dr. Asif Mahmood. I'm here with the Honorable Congress Member Brad Sherman. We both have been strong supporters of Pakistan, especially Pakistan people over the decades to elevate their life. We have worked on several different projects to help Pakistan. Uh, it is very important that when something happens which is not the core value of American values like democracy and human rights abuse, we should raise our voice. Uh, we have noticed in last uh, several months, especially last few days, very disturbing and worrisome developments have happened. Uh, people have been uh, uh, brutally beaten while they are demonstrating, elections have been delayed, and there is no real course of democracy in Pakistan at this time. Uh, it is very important that we keep a check on the future of democracy in Pakistan. We believe uh, right to uh, right of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and freedom to demonstrate peacefully is the core value of uh, democracy. Uh, recently, there have been quite a bit disturbing news, especially there is a huge threat to Imran Khan's life, who, uh, who is the leader of opposition. Uh, I would uh, uh, strongly uh, urge Pakistani authorities to look into true democratic values and have the rule of law, but I would ask uh, Congress Member Sherman to discuss this in more detail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Dr. Asif Mahmood for keeping me informed on what's going on in Pakistan almost daily and uh, for his friendship and dedication to human rights. I'm Congressman Brad Sherman from California's best named city, Sherman Oaks. And for 26 years, I've served on uh, Congress's Foreign Affairs Committee, where I've dedicated myself to democracy and human rights. Uh, Pakistan is a partner and a friend of the United States. It's been a friend of the United States since the early 1940s when my grandfather worked in Karachi on technical education for the United Nations Labor Organization. Um, over the years, the United States and Pakistan has worked together on regional and global issues, and we've both been uh, the victims of terrorism. The United States supports Pakistan in hours of need, uh, such as the recent and devastating uh, floods. America must support democracy, and human rights around the world, and particularly in Pakistan. It's not the role of the United States to involve itself in Pakistan's internal governmental matters. We respect uh, Pakistan's constitution and its democratic process, but we must not shy away from raising our voice when human rights and democracy in Pakistan or elsewhere are at stake. The government of Pakistan, and every government, should respect the right of people to speak their right to organize, their right to demonstrate. Everyone would like to see a calm, orderly, democratic, and prosperous Pakistan where Pakistanis uh, can have uh, the freedom uh, to have an open political dialogue. And of course, uh, the IMF is looking for a democratic Pakistan uh, that is stable and follows the rule of law. Pakistan continues to face multiple uh, sources of internal and external conflict. Extremism and intolerance of diversity and uh, dissent have grown and are threatening the country's uh, prospects for social cohesion. The bombing of uh, the mosque in Peshawar is just a recent example. The inability of state institutions to reliably provide peaceful ways to resolve grievances and it's less the vacuum which is being exploited by extremist groups uh, that seek a, a violent alternative. Uh, the country continues to face a fragile economy along with deepening domestic polarization. I'm particularly alarmed by incidents uh, over the last year, uh, especially uh, alleged custodial torture. And even we saw the uh, uh, alleged custodial torture and sexual abuse of political figures, such as Prime Minister Khan's uh, chief of staff, uh, Shabazz Gill, and uh, the journalist, uh, Jamil uh, Faruqi. Uh, thankfully, those two were released but only after brutal treatment uh, that uh, resonates through society. More recently, we mourned the death of uh, the journalist uh, Arshad Sharif and uh, uh, the political worker uh, Zile Shah, whose uh, body was tortured and, and, and thrown into the street. Um, this is, is not 
would you like to see in a democratic in a democratic country? Equally concerning is the anti-terrorism case against uh, Mr. Khan, as well as the move by the Election Commission of Pakistan to disqualify Mr. Khan from holding public office for the next five years. Just uh, a few days ago, Pakistan's media regulator banned television channels from broadcasting uh, the speeches and news conferences of the former prime minister, accusing him of attacking state institutions and promoting hatred. It uh, also suspended the, the license of uh, they are why news, a private news channel. Uh, this is the third ban from broadcasting or rebroadcasting uh, the ex-prime minister's uh, speeches and press uh, presentations on all satellite uh, TV channels uh, since he was moved, removed from power. Amnesty International called these developments a disturbing demonstration of targeting critical voices and using the country's media regulatory authority to threaten to, to threaten press freedom. Overbroad use of bans on news and media publications constitutes a violation of the right to freedom of expression. Now, I'm not here to support anybody for any political office in Pakistan. I'm not here to support uh, Mr. Khan. In fact, he and I have uh, disagreed on uh, a number of international issues. Uh, nor is it my role to wade into uh, Pakistani politics. Rather, I'm advocating for freedom of speech, due process, and an even-handed application of the rule of law in Pakistan. Congress will continue to monitor the situation and take every appropriate action to uh, guide our government in the right direction in its involvement in Pakistan, and a direction that should reflect our dedication to human rights and to democracy. Pakistani authorities uh, should investigate the alleged abuses and hold accountable anyone who's responsible. Most importantly, we urge the authorities to make sure that going forward, uh, people are free and we don't see uh, political figures and citizens uh, who simply want to participate in the process subjected to uh, anti-democratic acts or worse yet, custodial torture. Thank you. I'm Congressman Bradshaw.